to Plain Speaking, the voice of the Democratic Party. I'm Frank Rosenhoover, your moderator. And as always, we have a stellar panel today. To my far left is Tom Patterson. To his right is George Thompson. And to my right is Gail. Yeah, Gail. <laughs> George's wife is Gail. <laughs> oh, Robin Arndt. Sorry, George. Sorry, Gail. And anyway, three of our stellar panelists, and we're not going to go into their background because we've got a lot on our plate today. And uh, we want each of you viewers to really, truly become advocates for what the Democratic Party stands for. And uh, I'm just going to start off by mentioning very briefly, and some of you may might have read this in the paper today or heard it on TV, but Senator McCain has presented an editorial that he wanted to print it in Pravda, the Russian newspaper, in which he condemned Russia for a lot of things uh, in answer to uh, Putin's editorial in the New York Times. Now, he didn't get the same coverage as Putin got because they only put it on the blogging part of Pravda. But I want to mention a couple of things that McCain accused the Republicans of, the, yeah, here we go, the, <laughs> accusing Russia of doing and Putin of being guilty of. One of them is suppressing democracy, not and re, uh, economic progress, suppressing economic progress. Another one is abusing the power and wealth of this country to satisfy a small group of the wealthy, which is the 1% again. And he's condemning them for, for their lack of social equality, opposing gay rights, uh, climate change, gun control, and, he, and that Russia does not respect the dignity of humans. It looks to me like, like what the Republican well, agenda. Yeah, it does sound I mean, similar. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's saying they're repressive. <laughs> 37 of our states right now are totally controlled by the Republican Party. And in every one of those, we see voter suppression. Is that something like do as I say, not as I do? Absolutely <laughs> right. So everything you hear, folks, please, our, our admonition to you is take a good look at what these people are saying and compare it to what the Democratic Party is saying. We don't have the same well-oiled Department of Lies and Half-Truths that they do. Well, yeah, they have right. Media with them. They have, I mean, the whole gambit. Well, just to remind people, when President Obama was first elected, he was the czar of this and the yeah. czar of that, <laughs> having all this power, and now he's being criticized as being wishy-washy yeah. and yeah. Uh, unable to make decisions, lost power. Uh, there's a variety of contradictions. And, you know, in the beginning, whenever that was, um, one of the female anchor women who was um, like graduated magna cum laude of her class, so she's like super intelligent, she was there giving a definition of czar because Obama was a czar. It was, it was ridiculous. Well, if you listen at all to the programming, uh, George W. Bush had as many czars as Obama yeah. did, but they didn't call them czars in those days. Well, no, the Republicans called them yeah. czars. I mean, they, of course, were out to discredit yeah. what uh, President Obama was doing. Well, so, like you say, I mean, <laughs> that word was intentionally used to associate somehow Obama with communism, socialism, yeah. which is the other uh, 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 accusation that was made, uh, you know, six uh, years ago. And by the way, he was also going to ruin our economy. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, let, let's go back and listen to some of these wise people, what they were saying five years ago, and what actually has uh, occurred. You know, and once again, they promote fear. Yeah. That's all they do. They and promote. I've always felt that any time you have to predicate your success or your program on fear, that means you're a loser. Because if you can't do it by intelligent reasoning, positive actions and interactions, then you are the loser. You are, you are not capable of being in the position of power. And that's yeah, what's that happening, make a good this whole thing. Well, just keep in mind, folks, just don't read the headlines, don't listen to the blurbs, take a good look at the body and the content of these articles the and facts. the positions, and get the facts. Mm -hmm. Because believe it or not, ignorance is a choice, yeah. meaning you don't take the time and whether, to learn. Whether you know it, whether you believe it or not, politics affects every aspect of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> you, many people say, politics, politics doesn't okay. affect me. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right. George, uh, we're going to start with the economy because that is absolutely the biggest problem in this country right now. 
lack of jobs, the economy is, is not as robust as it should be, and I know you have a graph here. Well, uh, the graph that I have here is uh, the tiny portion of people in the United States who are talking about 0.01%, I mean, not 1%, 0.01%, very select group of That's people. That's like three million people. And uh, the graph is showing over the years it runs from 1913 uh, through uh, 2010 or 11, uh, 2012. And what it shows is the uh, proportion of income that the, this tiny little group of people get. And, and it's uh, amazing, during the uh, years right before the Great Depression, 1928, uh, the very super wealthy uh, received a, a par approximately 5% of the income in the United States. And then dramatic fall off with the Great Depression, and a lot of this has to do with uh, the ownership of uh, companies, stock. Mm -hmm. uh, so the uh, uh, proportion of uh, the income that the super wealthy were receiving fell down to 1%. Then there's been a slow climb, uh, starting oh, approximately 1993. Uh, it peaked in uh, 2000, uh, well actually it peaked in the year uh, 2006 or seven. I can't tell exactly. And at that point uh, the uh, super wealthy were receiving 6% of the income. Now, I, I know people don't like to look at these things because it's so abstract, but to me it's just unmistakable that the super wealthy right now are <laughs> profiting and, and it's well documented that uh, a large number of other uh, people in the, in the United States, you know, their income isn't keeping pace. Yeah. Well, if, you, if those of us who try to get the best information we can, uh, Ed Schultz, and he's been showing this graph on his program for the past several months, and he shows that in the last 20 years, the wages and income of the average American worker mm -hmm. has flatlined. There has been a fluctuation of maybe a percent or two increase or a little decrease, but the percentage of the people that George is talking about mm -hmm. since 19, 20 years ago from today, it has increased 250 percent. So, well, yeah, <coughs> well, right there they were saying the bulk of more than 8 million jobs lost during the downturn have been recouped. But what they're not saying is most of them have been recouped in the service industry yeah. and it's minimum wages, wage. Yeah, people yeah. have lost and exactly. no benefits. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's a decimation of unions, really. Yeah. I mean, let's 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 get the real culprit here. It's well, I, I told businesses yeah. attack on unions. Well, I told you guys before, and I was out in California in October of 2010 <clears throat> when the Republican national governors met in Oakland, California, and their number one priority, number one was the total destruction of public sector unions. Yeah. Walker went back to Wisconsin, Kasich went back to Ohio, yeah. Snyder went back to Michigan, Scott went back to Florida, and oh, uh, Corbett. Corbett hadn't taken over yet, yeah. but he would in January of 2011. They jumped on the bag wagon. Look what's happening in those states. Yeah. Well, it's not only the uh, decrease in union membership, mm -hmm. uh, uh, AARP, which uh, I'm a proud member so of. So am I. <laughs> uh, they they had now. in their most recent newspaper a, a little thing that brings this more concrete. And what it compared is the minimum wage in 1963 and the minimum wage in 2013, this year. And uh, they, uh, to take account of inflation, they sort of eliminated uh, the, the money and talked in terms of how long it takes someone working at the current uh, minimum wage of 725 compared to the minimum wage back in 1963, how long it takes to work to buy certain things. And uh, out of the list that they had, uh, for example, in 63, if you worked minimum wage, uh, you had to work three and a half hours to pay for a tank of gas. Today, working at minimum wage, you have to work eight and a half hours. Oh, that's over, over double. Now, now, part of that has to do, of course, with the price of uh, gasoline, but let's just say another area, a new home. Back in 63, working minimum wage, it would take you 6.7 years to buy a median price new home. Now, 
it costs, it, it, it would take you, instead of 6.7 years, it takes you 16 years at, at the current minimum wage to uh, buy a new home. Mm -hmm. uh, just other things like bread. Uh, uh, back in 63, it took you 0.2 hours <laughs> to, or to, at minimum wage to buy a loaf of bread. Now it takes you, uh, uh, well, okay, I'm, I'm switching instead of hours, this is the cost. The cost uh, would be of a loaf of bread, 20 cents to, uh, at minimum wage back then. Uh, now it's a dollar forty-one. Yeah, you know yeah, it, that is adjusted that's for inflation in, in terms of money. And the thing is, it's impossible to keep up a standard of living, and and that's what a lot of people don't pay attention to. They say that these people can go out and get training to get new jobs. Well, that sounds like pie in the sky because many people can't go out and get tra retraining because the jobs that they are being trained for, like in the computer industry and in uh, other areas that require not just going to the Votech or going to a company for training, you've got to have a little bit, uh, uh, some period of time to be trained and these people don't have the, the resources. Yeah. How about when people are like a single mother who exactly. doesn't have anybody to watch the kids, who doesn't own a car? Yeah. She can't even get to a training session. Yeah. So to say that there's all kind of training out there, and what about having to move? What if you have to move from Altoona to Decatur, Georgia? Right. Yeah. I mean, the whole idea is simplicity in its most stupid form. <laughs> there are jobs out there, you just are too lazy to get them. Well, yeah, and some of the programs that enable people to work with children, you know, they're being cut back. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking yeah. child care, daycare. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, not everyone has a convenient grandmother uh, or grandfather yeah. sitting around. <laughs> some some people have relocated, and, and as soon as they do that, they have no support from a distant family. They rely on these programs to work. Well, and, and then you have the older ones. You have the over 40s have lost their jobs, too. That's a whole group of yeah, people and, that... And yeah. that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a tragedy, Beaver. Who's going to hire a 40, 45, 50, or 55-year-old person? When Even though, was, and but you know, there are some statistics, particularly in uh, the food service industry and so on, and other very low income uh, minimum wage, that the percentage of senior citizens has dramatically increased as the employable group instead of like in the summer times, kids are in college, or during the, the, the actual college or school year, a lot of kids had jobs, you know, to sustain a little bit of a income to, to do, enjoy some of the things in life. And nowadays, these older folks are staying there. Some of them have eight and 10 and 12 years in McDonald's. Yeah. That was yeah. unheard of 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, you lasted yeah. a year or two till you moved on. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the labor market, it clearly has been affected by uh, people uh, from other countries willing to work uh, at a lesser rate, but... Yeah. Uh, the other uh, issue that in that regard is that the people, the CEOs, the uh, management uh, people of some of these companies, even though they expect their employees to work at a, a low rate, I mean, they're not actually following <laughs> what they expect for their uh, lower employees, the ones that actually are doing the work. Uh, uh, you know, and that's one of the big disparity of income problems. Mm -hmm. CEOs over in the United States here, mm -hmm. you know, make way more than other countries' CEOs. Yeah, 350 times the average worker. And, and it's not that way in other countries. No. Uh, in Japan, there was a law that forbids. It sets a ceiling. You can only make a certain number of times. Most of Europe has that. I yeah. think Spain is like 20 to 30 percent. The CEOs make then the let you know then over twenty times what yeah twenty the, times the, the, yeah uh, the employee work yeah. well well we might add though in Spain that did translate into better employment right. conditions no. because their unemployment rate right now is yeah. uh, whatever twenty five percent I think so you know we, 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 <laughs> yeah, the big error. the yeah. big question is what, what what can we do about it see that's the issue I mean how how do we how do we get this thing turned around so that there is more opportunity. You know, I really think that the government has to start taxing business because right now business is sitting on trillions of dollars in the mm -hmm. Caymans or other um, investment areas that they don't that they don't have to pay taxes on. If the government 
forces them to pay taxes on it, they'll use it to put it back in their business and hire and expand their business. That's that's how that's what we did coming out of the depression. Well, you know, when taxes were like what 90% for for businesses and stuff, instead of paying taxes, they put it back in their business. Well, infrastructure. How many yeah. you just hear in the news just recently again? How many bridges in the United States? 65,000 bridges in the United States are in some serious yeah. A state Dis of disrepair. Yeah. Roads. I mean, the PennDOT, sec uh, sec uh, PennDOT director in District 9, which is the one we're in, has a list of 50 bridges in the nine county area he's in charge of, and they haven't closed any yet, although they're threatening to do one or two. I just read in the paper the other day. Infrastructure alone, and that's how we came out of the World War II boom, too. Right because we built more highways, we built more schools, we built more bridges, and we maintain them. Today, my mantra has been the last couple of years, if we don't start repairing bridges and highways, we're gonna end up with everybody buying a jackass and a sled, <laughs> because that's the only way you're gonna travel. Yeah, yeah. like Texas roads. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how, how would you like to, the, for, the high, for the roads, like down in Pittsburgh, how about if one or two of those bridges close? And how they're going to get to work and get away from work, havoc. you know? I know. How, don't people understand that? <laughs> yeah. Well, you go to other countries. Uh, you have high-speed railroad. I, I mean, we've pretty much written off railroads in the United States, where other countries have Use decided that that's expanded uh, a very efficient way yeah. to transport product. It is. And uh, China, you know, uh, has the many high-speed high oh. roads now. In fact, their, their, their air uh, yeah. line, airport infrastructure <laughs> is world-class actually the terminals yeah. uh they, they've decided to modernize uh, every aspect of their economy except pollution they they still uh, are building coal fire power plants and and of course they're suffering the consequences but, of that know, with, well yeah it's almost like walking in the dark when you're in uh, yeah yeah <laughs> but that. they always they also spend double on the amount of um new fuel technology like the the alternative wow. They spend double than what the, you know, the U.S. does. We spend like 35 billion. They spend around 70 billion. Well, well, so they, they, it's in development. I mean, at least they're putting money into it. Well, right. They they basically caused Solyndra to go bankrupt because mm -hmm. they kept dropping, building factories for solar panels, dropping the prices, and in the end, the United States uh, manufacturers of solar panels couldn't compete. And everyone <laughs> blames uh, Obama for you know yeah. uh, doing yes. something to feed money to Solyndra, well, I mean, it was really the Chinese feeding their companies more money and yeah. yeah, making it attractive for their own companies mm. to uh, build solar panels. You know, mm. they're all complaining about they don't, have, they don't have enough money to run their governments. Did you see in the Altoona Mirror today what they want to tax now? The people who drink. They want to tax for every drink that's sold in bar rooms and clubs oh and everything gosh. else a 10% fee that's going to go particularly for the Act 47 districts. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh. Now, we already are getting money in government from gambling, the lottery, all the slot machines and everything. <clears throat> What's next? <laughs> Legalized prostitution? <laughs> have sex for your government so you can have... I mean, what is? how insane is this that in to America do, today, we're depending on sin taxes to run government? <laughs> yeah, <well. clears throat> Well, I, I was just saying, uh, alcohol already is taxed more than other but, products. Yes, but and now I, they want it at the bar. I mean, I they, you go in for a quick beer after <laughs> work, and it's no longer, well, I don't have to go home and drink. You yeah. know? I mean, it's insane. It why, why can't people understand that the only legitimate form of revenue that government has is taxation? And if you want good roads, if you want good education, if you want police and fire protection, don't expect the guys who go to the bars to pay for it, or the people who play the lottery. Yeah. I mean, every citizen has an equal responsibility. Absolutely. What about the people who don't drink and don't gamble? Yeah. I mean, shouldn't they have to pay their fair share then? To well, run government? Well, well, the gasoline tax. The uh, gasoline. What if you don't drive? <laughs> well, or if you drive a solar-powered car. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. you know, you're using the roads, but you're <laughs> not paying any gas you know, tax. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now, uh, do, we, do we want to discourage solar-powered cars? I, I don't think so. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, know, exactly. 
The solution is so simple. You have to raise taxes. Now, nobody likes to raise taxes, but then again, what happens when they close the roads? They close the bridges. Yeah. Schools close. The police departments are decimated. The fire departments. We have a guy in, in, representing the 79th district who has said repeatedly that government has no function to provide ser services to the, the people. They shouldn't be paying for police and fire and research and development and education. He w told people that if you live on a, a street and there's a pothole out there, it's your job to go out and fill that pothole, not government's. Well, well, I, th I think John McGinnis is also questioning whether the government is capable. Oh, that's his name. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 <laughs> of, of providing the service. Uh, yeah, you know. So there's that issue, and and you can see it play out here in Altoona. You, you keep having people apparently agreeing that Altoona should not be given more tax money, and then what? crops up actually is private initiatives uh, like our town and and in my mind they're a substitute for the police department in many ways you, you know they've come in with private money the same people that are supporting our town probably are opposing taxes being given to oh, the absolutely. city absolutely and and so it's sort of i sit back and i look at this and i say this is a little bit confusing to me <laughs> is this really a proper role to to like the trevon martin case where instead of having a police officer you in, empower a, a private citizen to well, go around and and uh, policing neighborhoods. Yeah, well, it's well, just like the, I, I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a question though that well, people is. have. Uh, yeah. And and you know, it, it sometimes it is so ridiculous that it's silly. But the the point is, and and folks, we, we ask you to just stop and think about this. What is the function of government? If you don't want government, fine. We can, and then how are you going to live? How are you that, going to function? Who's going to treat? That's the cold hard truth. Through? The only the only government helps the poor and working class. Business is thinks government gets in the way because they have pesky regulations and everything. But in all truth, the poor and working class need government. You know, they, they say privatization is, is, is important. Corbett, when he ran, and even when he became governor, he said to the people of Pennsylvania, get your <laughs> phone books out, look in the yellow pages. If there is anything, any company or group in that yellow page system set, setting that is performing or can perform a function that government now performs, let me know and we'll privatize that. Now, what happens when they privatize? Let's take Valley View. Yeah. It was being run by the county mm -hmm. government. How many years? Everything was okay, making money. They sell it. The pension. We find the pension plan was underfunded. Now we find that, there, that Thompson Pharmacy, who used to provide all of the drugs and, and medications, they're out, they're out. What's yeah. next? Privatization, these people are not in business to provide the kind of service that was provided before, in my mind. So people are suffering. <coughs> exactly. Where is the... <coughs> well, for what it's worth, you, know, you have an abandoned car on your street, you have a property that's falling down. You have, you, know, you can pick up the phone, and you have somebody that inevitably in government is responsible. You, know, you have somebody you can go back to, but if it's a private industry, what do you do? You know, I, you've ever tried to call tech support for something? <coughs> yeah, push one and hold. <laughs> yeah, but you have no responsibility. Private industry has no responsibility. And if they don't like it, they just cancel the contract and walk away. What is the basic goal of, of private private companies to save government money to, well uh, the private companies yeah the to, private to make money to make oh, money to make, to okay, private, yeah. okay yeah i mean so the, i'm sure i'm not saying they're going to be totally unresponsive but do you think they're going to be as responsive if they knew they were up for re-election I mean, it's George as a property owner. I'm sure he knows that if, if he would let the, the grass in front of his properties grow up uh, knee high, then waist high, then head high, the city would be after him. Well, right. And of course, as a property owner, you also realize that you're not in total control. You can have your individual house perfect, and if the house next door is uh, bl blighted, yeah. The value of your, your property, property has decreased, yeah, and, right. and uh, you know Altoona, of course, with a decreasing population, has actually had that problem mm -hmm. for many years, mm -hmm. and they have addressed it. 
But the funny thing is, uh, most of the monies coming for the demolition projects that Altoona has actually are coming from the federal government. And guess what? Those funds are uh, being decreased cut. over yeah. the last few years. And I'm not sure what the city's going to do. The city yeah. itself has no money, and they've always used the federal funds, which are now decreasing. Who is responsible for demolishing these uh, uh, properties? See, yeah. and, and the, city, the city itself is going to decay more. You know, people say that everyone should have the responsibility to take care of their own property. Well, we know very well that human nature takes over, and some people just don't care. And so some the people don't have the money. And they don't have the money. So government has a function there to try to help you help make your city look better. Now, what if the money isn't there to do it? What are we going to have? Streets that are full of that, potholes that, as well that as look roads? look like third world countries. You know, that's, <clears throat> that's what we're coming to. So what, what are we saying, folks? <laughs> well, well, I know where, where my uh, <laughs> vote is. Uh, you need government. And, you, and if you decide you need government, then you have to fund it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, it's and this idea that we're overtaxed, by the way, which, of course, is, is one of the fallacies. I guess you say overtaxed compared to what? We're the 15th <laughs> lowest taxing entity country in the world. The 15th from the top. And that was statistics several years ago. I don't know what it is now. But in Norway and Sweden and the Netherlands and places and England and France, they tax at the high. The cost of gasoline in those countries, when people look at it, they're paying five, six, and seven, and eight dollars a gallon. And and we sit here and complain because we're we're at three dollars and sixty nine cents in holding. Well, the only thing that we're not uh, cheaper. And, and is health care. Oh, yeah. we are the worst. Uh, yeah, you know, we, we are double the price yeah. of other countries that provided health care. And, and unfortunately, because so many people can't afford health care, the statistics on, on longevity, uh, deaths at the childhood uh, within the yeah. first year of birth, we're worse than, than other we're like uh, countries. We're like a third world country. We're behind we're like, Uganda. Yeah. So, so, so we have this... Uh, uh, or Mexico's right under us. Yeah. yeah, we got this unusual mixture. We got high-tech medicine, and if you can afford it, great. You notice all of the uh, people from other countries tend to come to the United States for health care, and that's great. You know, yeah. we should be proud of that. But unfortunately, we have a whole it's bunch of people that can't, to all. can't yeah. afford it. Yeah. And then, to all. you know, right now, that's one of the... The shutdowns of the government over Obamacare. I mean, it really makes so little sense in, in my mind. It's like we have this stellar health care system in the United States that the Republicans want to preserve. They want to preserve something that costs double what other countries provide. Yeah. Because? <laughs> well, I'm not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> well, 15% of the lowest taxes also equates to a country with the largest collection of millionaires and billionaires. We have more wealth in this country in the top 1% than, in fact, some of them, certain groups of individuals, have more amassed wealth than some countries. Well, and uh, we, there was a stat the other day, well, we won't get into that, this sounds more like a, but the, the point I guess we're trying to make is that if you want services from government, you have to understand. Now, people say that, well, there's so much waste in government. Well, there may be waste, but when you take a look at a three trillion dollar budget, the waste is probably about that 0.01 percent that you talked about before. And if you got rid of all the waste, you know, you're still going to need the service. Yeah. What do you say, 67 policemen is too many for the city of Altoona, when they used to have in the high 70s before? It used to be up to 100. 100. Yeah, yeah, and so, I mean, so where do we draw the line? And I just got to draw the line or they'll break my neck. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to take our break and we're going to come back. And we want, we want to try to be a little more positive, folks. But, <laughs> I mean, if you listen and watch and see, it's pretty hard to be. But the Democrats are going to do the best we can. <clears throat> Let's take our break. When Jamie was a teenager, she would spend her lunch hours going to the tanning salons. I didn't realize how dangerous they were. If you tan when you're young, your risk for melanoma are increased by 75%. That's huge. What I would say to mothers that allow their daughters to tan, no mother should have to visit their daughter in a cemetery. 
One person an hour dies from melanoma. Jamie's hour was at one o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, March 16th, 2007. I hope no one else has to mark their hour. This message is brought to you by the American Academy of Dermatology. Savings Land here with a story for you about two young spenders named Tommy and Sue. Their parents let them buy whatever they chose, like video games and designer clothes. As they grew older, they spent all their pay on fancy cars, houses, two lattes a day. They lived in the moment, never saving a dime. When they tried to retire, they'd run out of time. Working forever is Tom and Sue's fate, so choose to save now before it's too late. Visit our website to find out more, because a happy ending's worth saving for. Okay, welcome back. Plain speaking, the facts, folks, the facts. We can do better, but with the current government we have, particularly in those areas that are being run by our <clears throat> opposition party, we have seen a massive attempt to destroy the rights of many people, the voting laws in many countries, in many states. Mm -hmm. The fact that the food stamps, they want to cut food stamps from the very people that need it. Probably 70% of all the people who get food stamps are the young and mm -hmm. the old. Mm -hmm. And there are some people in between who because of working many working family families, families who don't have the, the means to do it, but they want to cut stuff like that. And where are we going? You know, we were talking about before, right at the break, this pending shutdown that the government is facing. The Republicans are running pell-mell into shutting the government down. Now, there's a blurb this morning on one of the uh, channels that it takes $1.4 billion to shut it down and start it again, because it's been shut down twice before. Now, that alone should be a deterrent. Yeah. But the fact is, because we have so much money, we might as well shut it down and start it up again. Yeah. I mean, everyone's complaining about the debt. <laughs> the, well, yeah, and uh, the idea that you could uh, shut down the government because we don't have enough wealth here in the United States. I mean, just look at what the United States government owns. You go out west and, you know, some of the states, 40, 50 percent of the land is actually government. owned by the government. And by the way, all the cattle ranchers think it's their God-given right to graze all their uh, <laughs> government cattle ground. On, on government grant. And they get, uh, you know, very upset if you uh, have uh, a wolf population increasing, uh, you know, as a policy because it infringes on their right to graze on government land. But in any case, I mean, the whole idea of the United States is broke. Is, is it's, completely it's ridiculous, and let's hope and the rest of the world who happen to buy a lot of our government obligation bonds, uh, you know, view this as total politics, you know, not, not based in reality. Because, you know, there is a problem. I yeah. mean, the United States has borrowed money, and I might add, not only the government of the United States, one of the problems back in 2008 when the bank collapsed, we've discovered that private people had borrowed way more than they could pay. Yeah. And this, uh, the, uh, you know, period between 2008 and current, you know, now the people themselves have gotten their own personal uh, credit uh, more under control. But, uh, you know, that's been one of the problems. The, the people had borrowed to the hill. And, uh, Tom, what do you think the main reason for the shutdown is? Well, I think it's ideology. That's what it comes down to. The Tea Party conservatives that have worked their way into the federal government feel that, like you said earlier, government's responsibility is not to take care of people. Government is to be, they want less government. And, you know, they feel by shutting down, this is going to send the message to the Democrats to put them in their place. Well, you know, there was a commentary this morning on uh, one of the shows that uh, Boehner's in real deep trouble because, you know, they're now accusing him of colluding with the Democrats yeah, to try to ameliorate he's not or, a real strong leader. Yeah, and he, and he's just not. the conclusion this morning was that if he loses his battle on the shutdown, that, that he'll lose the speakership. Yeah. But I think there was even something more ominous than even their ideology, because in that shutdown bill, what's the big hang-up? Defunding Obamacare. Obama, yeah. 
the that's that's parents. their whole thing, and they, yeah. and they they could have come up with, they say they have a compromise bill to run government, but we want to destroy the uh, Affordable Care, Care, Care Act. Care. Mm-hmm. Now, is that responsible government? Yeah, that's that's economic. Well, well, of course, I've said what I think <laughs> about that. Art. Our current health care system costs double the rest of the world's right. e- industrialized yeah. countries' health care. Yeah. Why would you want to have that and this uh, cry to uh, eliminate Obamacare? I don't actually hear any substitute. They have a- none. A- apparently, right. they like this idea that we continue to pay double the price for our health care here. Yeah. You know why? It, and, and this is terrible. How many of these Congress people sitting today, senators and House members, are bought and paid for by, by the lobbyists? Mm. Oh, well, of course. I- even this thing with uh, Corbett here, with the uh, he's finally agreed to have the Medicaid expansion in Pennsylvania, which uh, the three reports, the RAND study, the Pennsylvania's own uh, study uh, from the Independent Fiscal Office in Pennsylvania, and uh, the uh, uh, Pennsylvania Economy League's report said Pennsylvania actually would save money by expanding Medicaid and the reason was is because of the not 100 percent contribution by mm. the federal government mm-hmm. I mean it was almost like a no-brainer to, to accept this but because of ideology they in fact Corbett now has accepted it but he doesn't call it the Medicaid expansion. well he hasn't totally accepted it he's he's well yeah he, he's going to accept it under his terms yeah and yep. it's pretty late in the game because uh, you, you it's supposed to start October 1st well right you start to going into the marketplace which by the way we also haven't heard anything <clears throat> about because of another decision that he made to pull Pennsylvania out uh, of any responsibility, he's thrown it on the federal government, and he did that at the last minute in December, yeah. the very last uh, <coughs> point. But any any case, uh, you know, to me, the Tea Party argument, I'd love to have some of the people that uh, proposed eliminating Obamacare talk to, uh, about these issues. What is their substitute uh, health care plan? Status quo, I guess. Yeah. Well, most of these people that are arguing this are in the group that don't need health insurance or are not old enough to be retired and rely on Medicare. You know, they're, they just, they're sitting in a position where, well, it's something I don't need to worry about now. Hey, when I, when I was 20, I didn't worry about health insurance. I didn't worry about retirement. You know, I was busy building a life, but the people that are fighting this are the ones that are looking at, well, it's just not good. There has to be another way to do it. But like you said, nobody else has come up with a valid reason. You know, the, the, Medicare works. <coughs> Medicaid works. Yeah, it's not perfect. Yeah, there's fraud. But statistics have shown the fraud is going down. I mean, they are putting safeguards in place to reduce fraud. And that's important because there was an article in the Altoona Mirror, of all places even, about a year ago, and it was right across the very top of the page. Every year in the past several years, there has been $750 billion wasted because of fraud. And mismanagement, seven hundred fifty billion. Yeah, and and these are the private health care providers. Yeah, I mean, one of the things uh, our our federal representative uh, Schuster uh, he had a statement on his website about why you don't want Obamacare, and and that was uh, one of the things that he implied a government takeover of health care. Well, you know, I'm not sure you know, what people think of Obamacare is, but you're utilizing private insurance companies, you're utilizing private health care providers. In other words, nothing has changed yeah, in that it's, area. It's, it's just bringing capitalism to the health care industry. Well, that's the way I would look and, at and it. before it, it was a monopoly. You're going to be competitively exactly. uh, on the health care exchange and people can choose. And yeah. we're not mandating, and, uh, yeah. except... Once, basic levels of care. Uh, and once again, there's all these misconceptions about it, that it was going to fund abortions, which is not going to happen. It, it, it's, you know... Well, the Democrats did not do a very good job explaining yeah, their they, side they of the story. We yeah. really dropped the ball. The Republicans do a better job than Margaret. Well, and, and they do, and, and they do it in a manner that they scare people. Right. Yeah. The death panels, remember that crap that yeah. came yeah. out over yeah. the years? Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the one of the failings that I think our party is guilty of is that we are not forceful enough in, in and condemning it may not be a good word, but challenging the things people say. Right. I, I, I use as one example when 
President Obama was inaugurated the first time, the day after the inauguration, Mitch McConnell stands up in the U.S. Senate and said, our number one goal is to prevent this guy from getting reelected. He hadn't served a week. Yeah. If we would have had any kind of strength of our convictions, we should have stood up, every single Democratic senator, and yelled out, shame on you, and walked out of that body. Yeah. That was one of the most because egregious if, things. Yeah, because if you're, if you're rooting for a leader's political demise, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you're rooting for the country's demise. Because the leaders who sets the tone. Set, yeah. Well, and, well, and let's review what one of the major criticisms was TARP, throwing all the money to the banks. Yeah, who, who, I, I, don't, I don't think people understand because that's another. That was under I, Bush's I, administration, I'm October of his last term. That they actually have recouped all of the TARP money. Plus they made they money. Made, I think thirty-seven billion yes. dollars in the repayment yeah. because of some of the uh, money that uh, was actually they took in form of stock mm -hmm. uh, of banks and stuff, and the prices of the stocks have gone mm -hmm. up, and the government sold it. By the way, he was also Obama is also going to. Uh, take over the uh, banking system. Uh, yeah. Do, do you remember oh, yes, those yes. Yeah. I mean, to me, people should <laughs> review. They, they, they don't need to go back very far. Go back five years, listen to what statements were being made, and fast forward to right now and see how many of these uh, uh, predictions beca became uh, reality. Yeah. Uh, you know, and if so many of them never became reality, I would question the source right Absolutely. now of some Absolutely, of those people George. like Fox News all, all the doom and gloom yeah. well, you know, she has that fear thing rule <laughs> by fear yeah. well you know, the challenge would be to the people who think you know, the Democrats are wrong is you know, well what would less government look like you know, take a deep look at what government would be like if it was run the way they want it to be run Yeah, no workplace safety no overtime rules no work rules yeah, that's Child labor. The <laughs> mo I'll tell you, the most egregious statement ever made by anybody that, in my mind, was the genesis mm -hmm. or the beginning of this anti-government whole mantra was made by Ronald oh, Reagan, Reagan, and may Absolutely. he rot some other place, <laughs> because he said on national television one day that government is not the solution, government is the problem, and that is tragic. That is tragic, because from that day forth, all of the miscreants, all of the people out there who needed a cause, so. quoted Reagan, our president saying that. Yeah. And he'll go down in history as the most destructive president that ever lived, because he condemned the very government that he was pretending in 1981, whenever he took over, we were the leading creditor nation. The leading yeah. creditor yeah. nation. In 85, not even, just right after his first term, we were the leading debtor nation. So whose fault is it? I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that when you stand up as the world's greatest leader, and you don't only tell the American people, but you tell the whole world that government is the problem. But, well, well, one of the interesting things that just happened is Syria. Now, yes. I, I guess, uh, you know, President Obama, he decided, well, maybe government is the problem. He uh, proposed uh, attacking uh, Syria. Syria's chemical weapons. And, of course, uh, you know, immediately he was criticized for doing that. How dare he uh, do that? And his explanation was you can't let a country get away with that. It's, it's not my red line. It's the world's red line. Yeah. It's the United Nations' red, red line. Well, then he sits back and notices that no one else is uh, jumping up and waving a flag saying, yeah, I'll support you. Yeah. I mean, only France, I guess, has supported him. Well, and I think and, Botswana, too. <laughs> and, and then he, he realized, too, all the politicians uh, on his own party, uh, but also the Republican Party are criticizing this decision. So, okay, Czar uh, Obama <laughs> decides, well, let's put it back to and the Congress. Their ballpark. Uh, you know, they do have a role in uh, national defense. And look what's happened. This is why... 
you don't put it back in Congress because now all the loudmouths that kept uh, criticizing Obama for being weak at everything, all of a sudden they decide, well, we're not going to fund it. You, yeah. you know, this, well, well, this is not our role. You know, which is fine with me, actually. Yeah. I, I yeah, agree with, with that. Yeah, I, w yeah, I would <laughs> along with that. But you know, the, the, the real dichotomy here is that the Republicans are now saying that the reason that they are telling the president you can't go into Syria is that the polls are telling them that 60 to 65 percent of the American people don't think we should get into Syria. But lo and behold, what happened during Bush's administration, Absolutely. year after year after year, anywhere from 60 to 80 percent of the American people, when they were polled, says, get the heck out of Iraq. Did they respond March. to that? <laughs> Did they respond to that? No. It's only when they can zap the president. Yeah, that, and that's yeah. the sad That's the, whole, that's the yeah. sad part of it. They're not yeah. here to serve America. No. They're here to screw Obama. Yeah, exactly. That's a sad commentary in American politics. When their whole program, the House has voted 40 times to, 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 to defund a law that was passed. Exactly. And that's, wasting time. Oh, wasting that's the way time. I look at it. And, and, and that is the bad thing with uh, the Obama administration. Immigration was one of the priorities. Don't hear a person talk about no. immigration right now. I know, now. and that's yeah. a tragedy. Yeah, you know, and, and they're worried about, the Republicans are worried about Benghazi. I, I, I yeah. mean, you know, it's a tragic that's incident it. caused in many parts by this effort to not spend any money because uh, that was part of the reason they didn't have uh, security Security's enough. All, all you have to do is get on Google and Google incidents in embassies around the country that resulted in the loss of life. And under George Bush, 11 different times it happened. People killed on the watch. But the sad part they is... Never, they never said a word. The yeah. sad part is most people get their information from one news station and one newspaper. That's right. That's the problem. They don't yeah. research beyond... See, that's why I keep yeah. saying ignorance is a choice because all ignorance is, is a lack of knowledge. And if you just listen to one... <laughs> Just like a kid who's told repeatedly by a parent, you're no good, you're lazy, you're worthless. Mm -hmm. What's that kid's gonna grow up to be? No good, lazy, and worthless. But the thing about news media and everything, you've got to take a look at all of these issues. Well, the, the one other issue that recently, I mean, there's several, Fast and Furious being one, where yes. I, I, th I <laughs> thought the public information was very deficient. But I, I won't go yeah. there. Uh, the, the one was with this, 504C1 yeah. thing. In other words, Tea Party groups pretending that they're public charities. And the problem with that is you have no idea because they've now the IRS has sort of backed off and I guess said, okay, we're not going to investigate whether you're actually political or a public charity, disseminating information, slanted yeah. though it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to call you a charity, and then you have no idea who's funding them. That's exactly and right. And as, as a voter out there, I mean, I saw this with the last election. You had all these ridiculous claims on television. You kept seeing them, seeing them, seeing them. And if you didn't take the time to personally look into different issues, and like you say, Tom, yeah. many people don't, don't bother. They're, they're, they're thinking, oh, it sounds good to me, what they're saying. Yeah. And you have no idea who's, who's funding those things, who is behind right. it. Yeah. Because they were all PACs, uh, yeah. uh, officially. Yeah. Uh, you know, that you don't need to report who their donors are. Yeah. But like David you, Koch yeah. with the climate science. Yeah. And the thing about oh, what? Oh, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. You can... Well, no, but I mean, and, and the thing about it is, a lot of people complain about how left-wing the, the New York Times is. Well, if, and I've been a faithful reader of that for many, many years, they don't always support the left-wing causes. If you read the New York Times, they, those articles are voluminous as far as the research they do and the positions they present, both pro and uh, anti. They just don't take the liberal or the democratic view. They will research it and say what everybody else is thinking and saying. So if, you know, you, the, 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 here again, people have demonized the New York Times and made, they say it's a liberal rag, when in reality it is one, perhaps one of the most respected newspapers in the world. Exactly. Because of the depth 
of the exactly. reporting they do. I mean, I know I read them sometimes. I mean, some of these articles and think, why are we being so generous to the opposition? You know, but they give the whole thing. Yeah. So and I don't. That's I don't what, know that's what. That's what media is supposed to do. Yeah. It's not just supposed to be slant one-sided for anything. Um, uh, the new, the news agencies are supposed to report the news without bias, and that is essential to a democracy. You need reporters there that are going to ask tough questions of our leaders, so we get the full story. Mm -hmm. But you and, know, you brought up a good point. Ever since Woodward and Bernstein. These guys who are so-called the reporters, they not only tell you what's happening, they begin to editorialize. They begin to tell you why it happened and how it happened. That's not their job. No. No. You'll get paid to it's report the news, bought, like you say, yeah. not it's to become no a junior bias. editor yeah. or a uh, interpreter. Yeah, well, one of the advantage, internet has helped me tremendously in trying to find out what is really going on. And some of the articles, especially the New York Times, when you read them on the computer, they have links. They're talking about a report that was issued, and they'll have a little link to that report. Mm -hmm. So you click on the link in the computer, and it takes you to the actual report. You can read it and make your own yeah. de decision on, on whether the newspaper article accurately interpreted what the report was saying. Now, unfortunately, all this takes time, and I know yeah, people yeah. are people out there don't working, do and, yeah. and so they don't necessarily have time to do this. Yeah. But, uh, but that's really, part of journalistic ethics, yeah. really, well, to leave your bias out. Yeah, well, the news goes back, you know, TV news goes back to Ronald Reagan again. He changed the rules with the FCC to allow the advertising to be part of the news, and yeah. that was a no-no. Yeah. You know, prior Up until to the then, Reagans. yeah. And to, not, and to also... Um, we we had that both sides were had to be represented right. and with under Reagan yeah. that went away. That, that yeah. went away. Yeah. I mean, they have I people mean, stopwatches. He yeah. was his yeah. the demigod Reagan gets all this adulation yeah. from the far left yeah. right. Yeah. The guy was a he disaster. Did. Yeah, he was. But no, we have another issue, and we better take a look at that gun control. Now oh, I know yeah. it's a very dirty word. But in light of the tragedy that happened one right. day. You and know. you know, it goes back to this whole issue I, I raised a while ago. The hmm. issue of, are the legislators listening to what the people say? Because if you remember right after Columbine, right after New, uh, Newtown, and what, uh, after Aurora, there was a hue and cry. 80 to 90% of the people said, let's have at least better Checks. Background checks, checks and everything. Exactly. And what has happened? Yeah. They don't listen to it. No. But you throw a Syria in there where it looks like Obama's going to be smeared. Yeah. So they, oh, I'm listening to what the public says. Yeah. I mean, the fact is this guy had some serious mental problems if he'd been listening to the news. Exactly. Right. I mean, where well, do we well, by the way, Obamacare addresses that, uh, although I'm not sure people want to hear it. Uh, yeah. they, they want to have expanded coverage for health care. Yeah, but yeah. do the people want to pay for it? See, that's the whole thing. They say we ought to have, everybody ought to be given a psychological evaluation or something. Well, are you willing to pay for it? Are you willing to get the money together? Mm -hmm. and, and then they say, well, why do we have so many criminals running around the streets? They're on parole, they're on probation because we don't have enough parole agents and probation agents because the people don't want to pay for them. Well, and more expensive they're in sitting in prison. prison. Right, exactly. And, oh my God. And, and so instead exactly. of treating people, and we've then, decided that they're criminals. And, and, and they the stay ones on death row, look how much, look how... How, how long how they're on death row? The Some cost. guys been on there 10, 15, 20 yeah, years. Look what the cost is for but, them. Oh, exactly. Well, health care, or uh, prison uh, was a gross industry in Pennsylvania. Now, uh, to... Governor Corbett's credit, he's trying to stop uh, incarcerating everyone, uh, you know, and that's part of the reason Crescent closed and Greensburg mm -hmm. closed, but, you know, it's still uh, uh, an atmosphere out there where you got to be tough on crime without really looking into, well, what are you talking about? So many yeah. drug addicts, which is another thing that supposedly medical care treatment can, yeah, can they'll, they'll help be anyway. Yeah. Uh, and so even, you have mental illness, drug right. abuse. Even without and, an addiction, there are people who are arrested for the use of marijuana. In, now, you see a lot of states uh, are legalizing it. But 80% of many of the county jails and, and the state prisons are made, the population there are pe of people who have used to Talk. a very limited amount, amount of 
yeah. marijuana or some other drug. And it's have done no crime other than possession. Yeah, well, possession well, they, they, or... They may be petty sellers yeah. of the drug to support their own different. habit, yeah. but, but they're not what you would call cool. true dealers. So. But yeah. you get these idiots like Arpaio, the sheriff from uh, Arizona, and, and some of the, uh, oh, of the people who are responsible for enforcing the laws, like district attorneys and the police, they get this mindset that they're all criminals and let's put them in jail and throw away the key. Yeah. Not thinking of the tremendous cost. Look at the big article that, that was in the paper yesterday. Thomas said he had this big argument. We gotta take away the rights that these guards have and these people who work for the prisons. They don't need these sick days and they don't need these uh, family leave days and everything. They're misusing this privilege. Did I'm, you see that in the paper no, yesterday? I, I oh, read that. They want, and that's the number one priority in bargaining for this contract now. Get rid of those benefits. And uh, did they ever go in there and spend six months dealing yeah. in the conditions which these people have to work under? And yet exactly. they sit back and sanctimoniously when condemn. Telmasetti works part-time. <laughs> well, well, well I mean, yeah, at, at and I mean with the city, I yeah. mean, to get to Act 47, yeah. I mean, some of the recommendations that I guess they're gonna have to live by, although they, city council pretends, in my mind, they're <laughs> pretending that they have some discretion, but I think they're going to have to live with whatever Act 47 said. Yeah. And it all deals with cutback of benefits. And at the end, the question is going to be, do you have people that are going to continue to yeah. want to work for government? You see, the thing that distresses yeah. me about governmental officials doing this, like the commissioner and so on, and the mayor and city council, you don't negotiate in public. These are negotiable conditions, terms of conditions of employment. Yeah. You don't get on and, and write an editorial to the paper with the position that you're going to diminish. That's done at the bargaining table. And city council shouldn't be talking publicly about, we've got to cut the benefits, we've got to take away this. That's something that should be done in the privacy of negotiations. And I, I, I think it's absolutely wrong for public officials to be spouting off can, uh, statements about things like this when it is not in the best interest of the workers. How do you expect those people to have a better attitude yeah. toward give their them, work? Give them some dignity. I mean, yeah. look at the training that they have to go through. Yeah. And if, if many of the veterans of, of that facility quit, then what are you going to be faced with? People off the street that have no training, yeah. you're going to have to train them, take all that money and time, and, you know, every everything's compromised. Well, they ought to Everybody ought to adhere to the old Indian admonition. Don't criticize another brave until you walked in his moccasins for 10 days. Well, twi twice a year or something you can do about those yeah. public officials. Well, and that's, that's it. <laughs> Folks, we, we, uh, we're going to close with this. Get out the we bird. can yeah. vote. <laughs> we can get rid of the people who are not responding positively on how to deal with your problems, your situations. Get out and vote. You have that right. Don't say my vote doesn't count because it does count. And they're all not crooks down there in Washington and Harrisburg and in Hollidaysburg and so on. There's a lot of good public servants. Don't condemn them because all you hear and, is condemnation. And don't say politics doesn't affect your lives. It affects every aspect of your on life. This, on this show that it And does. we as a Democratic Party want to do the best we can to get back in power to help protect you and help you enhance your life. We'll be back again next month, plain speaking, and that's what it is, plain speaking. So thank you very much, and remember, vote for the Democrats. Thank you.